So what is statistical learning? It refers to a vast set of tools for understanding the data. These tools can be broadly classified as supervised or unsupervised learning. In supervised learning, we have our training data on which we train our model. For example, we have a data that captures the properties of cherry, such as shape, color, etc. Now we will train our model on this data. Once our model is trained and fine-tuned, we will give it an input that has cherries and grapes. Now that our model is trained and know how a cherry looks like, it will be able to identify the fruit and will classify the new data as cherry or not a cherry. This is called supervised learning. Few examples are linear regression, logistic regression, neural networks, etc. We will learn all these algorithms in our course. Next, we have unsupervised learning. Here we do not have information available on training data with us. Learning takes place on the input data directly. It categorizes the data according to their similarities, patterns, differences, etc. Let's say we have our input data. We created our model and gave the input data to the model. Then it will give us the output by learning through our input data directly. So that is how unsupervised learning works. Few examples are cluster analysis, principal component analysis, etc. We will be learning these modules as well. They will come in our next module that is advanced modeling. Okay, so the next question is what is a model? A machine learning model is a mathematical representation of a real life process. And we use algorithms for building a model. And algorithms are a set of rules which is to be followed in calculations. So this was statistical learning in brief. Now the next question is why do we need statistical learning? So basically there are two reasons. Either we are making predictions from our data or we are trying to draw inferences from it. Now let's say we have our input variables for selling a house. The input variables are location, price, expense on advertisement in different media, etc. Now based on this data, we may like to predict the sales. This is a problem of prediction. So here we can write a dependent variable y that is sales. Now the dependent variable is also called as response variable. It is written as a function of x that is predictor variables which are location, price, etc. So y is written as y is equal to fx plus epsilon. Now what is epsilon? We'll just discuss in a while. But before that let's understand how we can estimate fx. Now we will not be able to know the exact function of x on which y is based because we are not studying the whole population. So we can only approximate to the closest possible function which will be an estimate of the actual function. Hence we will write y as a function of f dash x indicating f dash x is an estimate. Now epsilon here is an error that is constituted of two components reducible error and irreducible error. Reducible error is an error which arises due to the mismatch between the actual fx and our approximation of fx that is f dash x. We can reduce this type of error by using better techniques or algorithms while building our model. So throughout our course we will see how some techniques are better than others in terms of addressing this problem. But this is a twofold problem. We will learn more about it in a while when we will see bias variance trade off which is an another important topic. Anyways, the second type of error is irreducible error. This error is also called as measure of noise. This is an inherent error in the data. Like in our example, say we use three variables to make prediction. But in a real life scenario, there may be many more variables on which price of a house is dependent. But it is not possible for us to include all the variables for various reasons. So there will be some error due to such reasons. Hence those type of errors are called irreducible error because they cannot be reduced by using some better techniques. So this was in brief what a prediction problem is. Now the second type of problem that we try to address by statistical learning is of inference. So sometimes you may not be interested in predicting the sales of a house. Rather you wish to know which of the variable has a greater influence on the sales. So you may like to know if your advertisement strategy is good enough or your prices are driving your sales etc. So problem of these types are called inference problem and we can use statistical learning to answer it. Now in our prediction problem we said that we can express our dependent variable 
that is sales as a function of predictors that is location price etc we also said that we don't know the real relationship between y and x but we will approximate it using estimate of fx so the next question is how do we do it well there are two approaches for it parametric approach and non parametric approach so in parametric approach we choose a shape of the function say we choose a linear function as fx so we can write fx is equal to beta not which is the intercept plus beta 1 into x1 plus beta 2 into x2 and so on now once we find the coefficients our model will be ready we can substitute any value of x and can predict our sales so here we assume that the relationship between y and x is linear based on which we found out the coefficients and then we can calculate the sales now the pros of this type of approach is that it is simple you just have to find the coefficients and there you go your model is ready but at the same time there are certain drawbacks as well such as the shape that we choose like here we chose linear may not match with the true shape maybe the true shape is not linear at all in that case our results will be unreliable so in the second approach that is non parametric what we do is here we do not choose any shape rather we attempt to find the estimated function that gets close to the data points as actual function we will learn it later but for now just understand that this is the main difference again the good part of this type of approach is that it is more accurate as it tries to mimic the actual shape instead of assuming anything but the drawback is that we would need larger data set and it is a complex approach so this was a brief about the need of the statistical learning